Our next guest is in town for a very special unveiling uh, at the Science Center. We're going to be getting to that momentarily. Before we do that, however, he's somebody you may know from another platform or another show, Pawn Stars. Let's take a look. I got this picture here. Uh, it's from, like, it says 1500s. As far as I'm concerned, this is like a scary picture. I mean, I wouldn't want to hang this on my wall. I really like it. I'm not really sure about the value. I'll give you five grand for it. How about 6,000? You did think it was worth two. <laughs> right. Now, uh, you know. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll give you 5,500 bucks. All right. Okay. All right. Tough negotiators. I feel really good about this buy, but I won't know for sure if the gamble is worth it till I have it appraised. Wow. Albrecht Durer. Do you mind if I take it out of the frame to take a closer look? Go right ahead. I get all manner of fine art coming in here, but when you're talking about an Albrecht Durer etching that's potentially hundreds of years old, that doesn't come down the pike too often. This piece is called The Night, Death, and the Devil. It's dark, the lines are crisp, the composition itself is very strong. It's almost certainly from the original plate. You can see the plate marks, the dimensions match up. I think it's a very nice impression circa 17th century. And even though it's not an early impression, it's a valuable one. I mean, I've seen pieces like this sell at auction anywhere from 20 grand to 50 grand. Yeah. <laughs> well, you made those guys happy. <laughs> I did. You're, that, I? you're the guy I just saw, but you've got this working now. I, I, I look so young. Yeah. Back then. I know that was before the before the yeah. scruff of knowledge. Right, right. Was, I was so. about to say the wisdom. <laughs> That's uh, right. Welcome to the show, Brett. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you very much for having yeah, me. Excited I appreciate to have it. you. Thank you so much. Uh, we came up with this late in the day, and uh, thank Brian Abzanka and uh, the crew on your end to make it happen. I, I have to ask because we don't have people show up here that are on Pawn Stars every night. <laughs> I mean, before we get into the real reason you're here. How does something like that happen? Specifically, how does it happen that you get involved? Do you solicit this, or do they basically look you up? And how's... No, it's kind of a funny story. They actually called me. The producers of the show called me, and I had been appraising art for a number of years sure. prior to them calling me. And we have a gallery in Las Vegas. It's been there for quite some time, almost 25 years now. So the producers found us, mm -hmm. and this was, I believe, like the first season, maybe the start of the second season when they mm -hmm. first called me, long before it really took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, we're with Pawn Stars. Uh, we do a show. Uh, we'd like you to come down and evaluate a piece for us. And my father, I'll never forget, he was in the office with me at the time, and I put my hand over the receiver, and I said, these guys from Pawn Stars gave me a call. They want me to come down and evaluate a piece. You know, should I do it? He's like, Pawn Stars? Yeah, do it, do it. He had heard of the show, but at that time, mm -hmm. I hadn't. So uh, the rest is history. I, I've been, uh, I was on the show for about seven seasons and over 50 episodes, uh, praising mm -hmm. everything from Albrecht Durer all the way down to you name it. So. Well, I have to ask one last thing on that front. Is that the type of thing that basically you do for the exposure, the credibility and thing that comes with it, or is there a retention, a retainer? Uh, you know, I, I can't talk too much about that yeah. because I, I signed some non-disclosures, yeah. but yes, yeah, suffice it to say, we yeah. really did it for the exposure sure. because that show, it's on in a hundred some odd countries, 30 some odd languages. Uh, I, you know, I get. I have, it's been a real privilege. I get yeah. recognized wherever I go. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, it's well, been you're great. Great exposure. Fifty shows, seven years. <laughs> great run. All right. So why are you in town? Well, I'm in town. I'm honored to be here. It's a very uh, special event that I was invited down here for, uh, the uh, Da Vinci, the exhibition at the Carnegie Science Center. Mm -hmm. We are debuting a sculpture there. Uh, the only, it's a casting from the only known sculpture to exist today directly from the hand of Leonardo da Vinci. It's called Horse and Rider. And uh, it's going to be part of the Science Center exhibition from now through to the end of the exhibition, I believe, uh, September 2nd. Right. And uh, we had the unveiling today, and it's uh, especially uh, poignant now because this is actually the 500th year anniversary since Leonardo's passing. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's all sorts of different Leonardo events going on. There's a movie that's going to be coming out soon uh, with Leonardo DiCaprio. So, uh, again, it was exciting to be here, especially uh, under those circumstances. I get it. I sense it even when you sat down. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, on a personal front, obviously, this to the extent we can separate the two, on a personal front, this has to be really cool because this is one of the reasons you got in the game. Absolutely. And professionally, it's got to be, one of, if not the Holy Grail, it's got to be up there. Well, and Albrecht Durer is no chump, but compared to Leonardo, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it, it, he's so far beyond the pale. When I got involved as an appraiser, I expected maybe I'd see a few Picassos or I'd appraise a Chagall or two, but Leonardo da Vinci, I mean, he's the ultimate Renaissance man. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, a lot of people don't realize there's really only 15 masterworks that were ever fully authenticated to his hand. So, uh, you know, to have one, uh, a sculptural work, the only sculptural work to exist today from the hand of Leonardo right here in uh, Pittsburgh at the Carnegie Center, that's exciting. What were some of your impressions uh, seeing it today? Uh, it, well, I mean, I've been involved with the sculpture for a number of years, but I always enjoy talking about it, and it's always great, especially when I get it in front of a new audience, mm -hmm. uh, to point out some of the specifics, because it, it really is a piece of history. It's 500 years old. It, uh, you know, it, it depicts a gentleman who was um, a friend and benefactor of Leonardo's back in that day, a gentleman by the name of Charles Duam Dambois, mm -hmm. who was the French governor of Milan at the time and a major patron of Leonardo's. Uh, but there's all sorts of evidence in the sculpture uh, of Leonardo's handiwork. There's, you know, evidence of divine proportion, you know, the golden sure. ratio that's in there. You can see actually his thumbprint where he would have manipulated the sculpture uh, with his thumbs. Uh, you can see, uh, again, there's a number of different experts that have chimed in with different tidbits here and there, but there is a, a gentleman, Ernesto Solari, who wrote a whole book on the sculpture identifying all sorts of hidden symbolisms, uh, letters, numbers, dates. Uh, it's a little like the Da Vinci Code, which, you know, I get off on mm -hmm. in history. Yeah. So yeah. It, right, it, right. it's been a great, uh, great project. Would that be one of the driving forces that got you into all of this, the history and, and so forth? Without a doubt. I mean, I love the detective work. I love doing the research. I love taking an unknown piece and, and researching it and find out, finding out who did it and when they did it and how they did it. And yeah, all the, the nuance, uh, really, I get off on. It's a major, major exhibit for Pittsburgh to have, is it not? Without a doubt. And it, the whole exhibit, not just the sculpture, mm -hmm. is, is amazing. I have to speak to that because I think it's really the best way to appreciate the breadth and scope of Leonardo's achievements. They have a lot of uh, inventions brought to life from his journals and codices that you can go in and interact with. Uh, you can pull the lev levers and the pulleys. You can get inside the, the, the tanks that he invented. You can see the scuba gear that he... I mean, he did so many inventions, and he was so much more than an artist, which most of us think of first and foremost, but he was a botanist, he was a scientist, he was a mathematician, and I think this exhibition really showcases all of those disciplines. Some of the answers you've given uh, have uh, made this a bit moot. Uh, on the flip side, it mm -hmm. is Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, talk a little bit, not just about where his place is and so forth, but but even beyond what you've just said, what makes him at the level that he is, it makes his work so special uh, th and unique. Well, well sure. Uh, like I say, he and, and the other Renaissance masters that you think of, you, you know, you think of um, Botticelli, you think of, uh, you know, uh, Donatello, Michelangelo, mm -hmm. all of those artists really brought art back to the forefront because, you know, it was pretty much the Dark Ages. There's no uh, doubt. That's before, why they're called the they're, Dark Ages. Yeah, before the Renaissance. And they really uh, just propelled art by leaps and bounds uh, through some of what I mentioned, some of their, you know, their use of divine proportion and, you know, how they were so far ahead of their time. Uh, and, you know, a lot of things, for example, Leonardo da Vinci's, his, his sketches, his, uh, you know, the Vitruvian man, his journal, uh, medical uh, renderings, those are still used in medical journals to this day because as a draftsman, nobody to this day can do better than what Leonardo did 500 years ago. Hmm. It's amazing. So he's considered the original Renaissance man. The ultimate, yeah, the ultimate Renaissance man. And, and, and we, we almost tend to throw that around a little too loosely nowadays or almost in a jocular sense, but when sure. you start talking about the breadth of of his impact in a number of different areas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can understand where the phrase came from. Without a doubt, and that's why I think this exhibition at the Carnegie is just so uh, incredible because you can see everything from the art side to the inventions to, you know, some of the fun musical instruments that he invented. I mean, uh, there were so many different sides and facets to Leonardo, and we're, we're very much feeling his, uh, you know, inspiration today. Good. That's really fabulous, man. I'm uh, really glad that you're in and you're part of it, and uh, that you obviously are turned on by it as you are because sure. uh, they're mm -hmm. just certain items and I would imagine certain artists if, <laughs> if you, you will. If you can't get turned on by Leonardo da Vinci and you're an art appraiser you're in the wrong line of work right. uh, but I, I think uh, you, the people of Pittsburgh are going to really enjoy the exhibit yeah. and the sculpture. Yeah and, and today overall I, I would imagine you felt it was a big success. It was a tremendous success I couldn't be happier and have really enjoyed my time in Pittsburgh for yeah. sure. Have you been here before? I've never been here before I'm looking forward to my return trip when I cut hopefully they'll choose me to come and pick the sculpture back up because I'm going to bring my kids uh, but the little bit of time I had I you know I went uh, down the River did North Shore and yeah. uh, really enjoyed my time. Yeah, I mean, I'm even 
even looking right here at a piece that uh, is in Huffington Post about the horse and rider mm -hmm. uh, uh, that uh, was unveiled in Los Angeles. Uh, That's right. That's when we that we did the very first uh, unveiling of it uh, because it was really lost to time for a while. Right. And it was re-unveiled and rediscovered, uh, you know, it, I think 2012 at that event, yes. Uh, and it was created when? The, the sculpture was originally cast uh, from a beeswax that right. was done uh, in fi circa 1508 to 1511. There's a little conjecture as to exactly when, but certainly in that period, that's when Leonardo was working directly with Charles D'Ambois in Milan. Okay, so if it's 500 years ago, and I, and I have something here that says 1508, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to say that three year play is okay. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, it's a pretty close, uh, yeah. you know, spectrum there. I really enjoyed the conversation. Well, thank man. you Thanks very for much for town. having Thanks me. Thanks for coming up and, uh, you know, stay in touch. It's, it's my soon. pleasure. I look yeah. forward to coming back soon. Okay, good enough. All We're right, going to come you. back. Uh, Brett Maley, fine art appraiser. And, uh, you know, say he's doing, he did the, uh, the show is nice, but obviously there's a heck of a lot more that goes to it. We'll be right back and wrap up the show. <laughs>